Hello everybody. I'm back this time with one more poem. A Noiseless Patient Spider by Walt Whitman. This poem is in fact prescribed for second semester BCom and BBS students of Dharwad University. <clears throat> that is Karnataka University Dharwad. Uh, this poem by Walt Whitman who is the towering uh, figure in American literature. On a superficial level, seems to talk about the detached uh, life or the isolated you know, life of human being in society and the need, the desperate need of him to connect with his own fellow beings in society. So that seems to be the theme of the poem at the outset. So I am saying it deliberately on a superficial level, but which obviously means it uh, demands a very profound reading, unfortunately, which we will not be able to uh, do it due to the limitation we will have and also the constraints that we confront while dealing with this poem for a basic English student than an optional English you know, student. Anyway, we'll try to do our best to understand it from, the, from both the point of view of examination and also for its literary and aesthetic you know, merits. Let me read the poem. A noiseless patient spider I marked where on a little promontory it stood isolated. Marked how to explore the vacant vast surrounding it launched forth filament, filament, filament out of itself. Ever, ever unreeling them, ever tirelessly speeding them. This is the first stanza of the poem. In fact, this poem, uh, titled uh, A Noiseless Patient Spider here, perhaps not really a relevant title. Not relevant in the sense Whitman never, you know, um, gave a title to this poem. In fact, this poem appeared in midst of other four poems or, you know, uh, in a group of five poems under a different title that is A Whisper of Heavenly Death. So, which in fact uh, sounds a, a far-fetched or a detached uh, a kind of you know a theme compared to this in you know, title a noiseless patient spider but since it is taken and uh, you know read in isolation for our convenience we'll have this title a noiseless patient spider we'll see so there is a spider when uh, he starts reading the poem i mean when we start reading the poem, we see there is a physical presence of the spider without any doubt. And there is a voice which is talking about it and perhaps the man, the person, the speaker, you can call him somebody uh, who, who uh, with so much of you know, sensibilities to the tiniest you know, creatures and their uh, perhaps you know, living on this planet is talking to uh, the reader and talking about the spider and you can also assume it could be the speaker could be Walt Whitman himself the poet himself so he says a noiseless not really producing any noise and it is very quiet the spider patient spider have you ever seen spider uh, making or creating noise it is not but it is again a kind of you know observation which is of the focus here emphasized here but if you have observed closely 
a moving spider or the spider busy you know knitting his web suddenly becomes stagnant and static you know silent if it hears some even the minute or you know at noise small uh, disturbance uh, sound will definitely uh, induce us in it some sort of uh, uh, fear to defend itself being very quiet so maybe it is conscious or aware of someone else presence in the atmosphere going by what it has to say in the very first stanza we'll find out whether is there a really a spider a noiseless patient spider and you can also say that it is described as patient spider because maybe it is thinking very seriously uh, before uh, you know venturing to, venturing in, into something uh, very uh, perhaps you know useful or serious thing so it's just preparing itself within so a noiseless patient spider waiting for something as if i marked so an archaic you know, word marked which means i saw i watched or i saw i saw a patient noiseless spider where where did you see on a little promontory a rocky uh, no projection uh, of a a cliff or something like that on top of a, a rock you can say the topmost surface of the rock uh, here perhaps i you know feel submerged in water on the shallow water of uh, sea so it is sitting on that you know rocky uh, projection of a cliff or a stone so where on a little promontory it stood isolated so the emphasis is on isolated and that uh, looks an important word here in this context it is not just you know uh, been found uh, sitting there but it looks isolated that's his interpretation that's his understanding he thinks that perhaps the you know uh, the spider is lost or uh, taken out of uh, its in connections maybe in a vast society or it it is not certainly sitting you know there on the top of this rock which is not its you know habitat so it is stuck somewhere it is lost somewhere it is been thrown away from its natural you know habitat and now it is isolated so it is alone isolated that uh, perhaps resulted in in you know, in uh, spider contemplating very deeply about something so being very patient and noiseless so i marked where on a little promontory it stood isolated marked how i also saw how the spider to explore the vacant vast surrounding it, it is trying to explore the vacant vast surrounding spider is a tiniest creature and when it looks around itself the overwhelming sea or the space or whatever the even that you know atmosphere is so big that it feels lost and frightened so that is why it's trying to explore maybe trying to find a you know a place to perhaps plunge into or to escape from this perhaps uh, the place which is not conducive for its life so it is trying to explore the possibilities perhaps uh, which would uh, you know uh, open door for its life a new lease of life for the spider which has been lost so vacant and vast surrounding vast again as i told you 
maybe so you know showing the magnanimity of uh, uh, that powerful environment or the atmosphere that it's been perhaps you know surrounded with and it launched forth it's an attempt it's not just you know uh, making an experiment it is a serious attempt with some with so you know a serious intention purpose that is what launching means here so launch means starting out on a serious mission so it has a purpose so it launches forth it just launches forth releases forward releases you know something out of itself what filament 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 shows the continuity shows the kind of you know uh, uncompromising way in which it's been working without you know perhaps uh, a fear or willing to give up not really you know, with a kind of determined you know way it's throwing out its filament filament a small you know thin uh, uh, layer like uh, a thread you can say thread uh, which usually a spider pr produces out of itself to knit the web so filament 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 and it knows it cannot take a, a big you know jump into a vast or vacant you know surrounding out of uh, this uh, you know area where it's been caught isolated so it has to do a continuous attempt to bridge perhaps that you know way or path to reach that vacant spot so or to escape from this confinement filament and filament filament out of itself ever unreeling them tire you know without a stop working continuously releasing that in filament out of itself ever unreeling them ever tirelessly speeding them continuously you know uh, without a stop working with an indomitable uh, you know sort of will with so much of you know determination never give up in you know, attitude of the spider now we'll move on to the second stanza and you now suddenly there is a shift in the beginning of uh, the poem the first stanza the speaker speaker seems to be addressing or talking to or talking about a spider now his attention is shifted to his own soul whether now there is a question spider is being used as an imagery for his own soul just to talk about his own soul uh, to perhaps you know uh, describe uh, the kind of uh, tumultuous uh, you know uh, notions or conflicts in his own soul or uh, in order to describe that uh, kind of an experience he has used the imagery of the spider oh you my soul 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 poet soul and the spider become one here you my soul where you stand so looking at uh, uh, you know his own soul where you stand yield to me the one how you stand isolated like spider in society the second what do you think where you stand what do you think and what is your understanding what is your purpose what would you think the destiny would be for you so surrounded surrounded again showing that you know kind of a, a, a self fastened shackles you can say i'll tell you why i think so self fastened you know shackles talks more about the kind of you know in, uh, existentialistic uh, approach i'll come back for that what is existentialism and all but here so 
it's a kind of it, it it talks about the overwhelming atmosphere or the influence of the powerful you know society where man is reduced to a, a, a mere you know a fragment where his individuality is lost where the powerful uh, you know society takes over a man and starts dictating the you know the terms and starts giving him the life which it wants him to live rather than the life that he wanted to live so that is how kind of you know helplessness um, man is being trapped in that is called existentialist in you know, philosophy so maybe that's been propagated you know through this uh, line surrounded surrounded in measureless oceans of space this measureless oceans of space may as i told you indicate a overwhelming you know society which is very powerful where man is uh, you know just fragmented uh, a very famous existentialist you know uh, philosopher jean paul sartre in fact you know says in his uh, being and nothingness uh, you know essay man is condemned to be free when he is thrown into this world he is responsible for the life he lives as the choices you know he makes determines his life so this kind of you know uh, a life without predefined purpose sounds to be a, a burden for human being it's a very profound philosophy as i told you uh, in the beginning you know of the poem itself may not be that easy to you know understand for a, a student of uh, uh, basic english or st- studying this as a base, you know part of basic english so it requires uh, an intensive you know interpretations and reading of uh, uh, all modern literature european classics and all anyway so here it's enough if you understand that man he feels isolated and he feels you know confined he feels exploited he feels just uh, suppressed by the very powerful you know society ceaselessly musing but he is not quiet his soul is not quiet ceaselessly musing continuously pondering over some some you know remedy possible some way out some redemption possible to just free break free you know of uh, the self as and uh, shackles as i said so ceaselessly musing venturing musing means you know thinking very seriously pondering you know over venturing venturing something that involves a kind of you know adventurous task it is not just trying you know something knowing very well that there is you know it, it amounts to some kind of an adventure and uh, being prepared for its consequences so the soul is trying to do something throwing throwing is also making endeavors making some serious endeavors to reach out to perhaps in people around him or in society seeking so seeking is a very serious word seeking is not for you know not an ordinary search seeking may mean some spiritual you know search so sometimes that you know makes things compli- complicated uh because uh, walt whitman was a transcendentalist you know uh, philosopher transcendentalist philosophy which uh, seeks to find an elevated you know kind of uh, life for human being finding a redemption out of this you know uh, life with plagued with sick hurry the modern life and trying to find solace within you know himself than in external things that seem to dictate you know terms uh, to this modern man so it is both he is both existentialist as well as a transcendentalist you know being that is why seeking you know some sort of you know spiritual seeking 
uh, understanding of you know, one's own self, going deep into one's own self, seeking the spheres, maybe unexplored territory or seeking the spheres means unexplored territory of one's own self. So, the soul is musing, thinking, venturing, throwing, seeking the spheres to connect them. To connect them means to arrive at some conclusion. In ordinary sense, to connect with the people around him and to uh, relieve himself of that you know, isolation at a literary you know, uh, level, at a superficial level and uh, to connect with the society. That is what connect them here. So, in true sense, in, as a transcendentalist, if you are reading this poem, connecting them means connecting with those peers or untraveled or you know, unexplored uh, territory of your own soul and find meaning because an existentialist says your existence in fact you know uh, precedes the essence your existence precedes the essence which means in order to make your meaningful you should exist first you should become aware of your own existence then only with the conscious choices that you make you add meaning to your life so that is what here connecting according to me to me it sounds so till the bridge you will need till perhaps you know you succeed in building that bridge or finding the path of uh, perhaps you know, salvation or redemption or at least redeem, you know, redeeming oneself from this uh, uh, you know, uh, isolated agony in isolation be formed be determined stay focused till the ductile anchor hold till the ductile this flexible anchor if it's easy to refer to that you know uh, the filament uh, the spider produces uh, out of itself here maybe the very subtle you know thoughts of uh, human soul they are subtle they are uh, you know ductile because it cannot be uttered or you know declared in uh, so much of vigor society is not still you know able to accept it because these are the things unsaid untold unexplored so far so that is why maybe these thoughts are ductile anchor or till it reaches its destination till it convinces you know uh, either yourself or the society that it has some meaning or connection so till the ductile you know ductile anchor hold till the gossamer thread that till that uh, very flexible thread you fling you are releasing out of yourself or you are making your effort uh, the thoughts that you are producing these are the gossamer thread you fling cat somewhere at least it reached somewhere and it finds some meaning in life oh my soul till then be farmed be determined or stay focused continue you know uh, perhaps musing venturing throwing and seeking uh, friends uh, for your convenience at least to enhance your understanding i have tried to translate this poem i am not a good translator i don't know it's my first attempt uh, you know in translation let me read it in uh, you know kannada kande na saddillade taalmeyali nadugaddeya tudiya neri anathavada jeda ondu shodisa bayasi tannavarisida kadala agada shunyava dani variyade tannodalolaginda ele ele eleyagi nula suruligala bisuda kande that's the first stanza the second one is bandhi neenu ananta aakasha avarisi ninna nadeyatta ninna niluvetta o nanna aatmave antya virada chinteyali nugguta seleyuta hudukutta ಎಣೆಯ ಬಯಸಿಹೆ ಆಕಾಶ ಕಾಯಗಳ ಧೃತಿ ಗೆಡದಿರು ಸೇತುವೆ ಸಿಗುವವರೆಗೂ ಮಣಿಯದ ಆಸರೆ ಹಿಡಿಯುವವರೆಗೂ 
ನೀ ಬೀಸುವ ಹಗುರ ಅಂಟು ಜಾಲ ನೆಲ ಕಾಣುವವರೆಗೂ ಓ ನನ್ನ ಆತ್ಮವೇ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್